we're going to be installing the Konica Minolta print driver. And this method applies to pretty much everything from the 7 series all the way up and some of the desktops like the, the uh, C3851 and other similar type models. We're going to be getting the driver directly from Konica Minolta because I have discovered that there are some sites out there that do not have the proper driver and some questionable sites. It uh, doesn't really specify what you're actually getting. So we're going to stick with the source and uh, I'm going to give you the URL for doing that installation. We're also going to be talking about two methods of installation. Uh, we're going to be running the installer and this is the method that you would use most of the time. So if you have uh, several computers that you need to set up to print to your new Konica Minolta, uh, we'll be using this first method. And with this method, you can actually copy the drivers to a thumb drive and go to each computer and install it. The second method, uh, when you would use that is if you have trouble with SNMP, uh, which is a network protocol not running on your network, or for some reason the, the machine just doesn't set up properly or doesn't detect the port or you know, various reasons. Uh, you might want to check with your IT guy if the first method doesn't work, but we'll go ahead and walk through the second method just so you can see what's going on here and you can give it a try and see if you can't uh, get your machine printing. So let's start with the first method. We're going to pull up our VM here, and the best place to get the driver is here, uh, kmbs.konicaminolta.us. In this case, we're going to be setting up a BizHub C308, so we're going to click the Downloads link at the top of the page. And we're going to, in the quick search bar, type C308. And it will give us a list of machines. And we're going to select drivers. And it's going to give us a big list of operating systems. Now I'll tell you, um, if you have a Windows box, all the Windows drivers and models seem to be packaged in one big package. Uh, Macs are different. Macs, you have to be specific. Uh, but I typically will go in and select the Windows 10 64-bit and all the drivers that we need are all there. So I'm going to select PCL. And if you notice, you can see a list of models here and this driver package includes the PostScript, the PCL, and the fax. So if you have a fax kit on your machine, you can do PC faxing. We're going to click this link and download the driver. In this case, I've already downloaded it to save some time, so we're going to click Cancel, and I'm going to minimize this. Okay. In our Downloads folder, I uh, took the downloaded file and I moved it to a folder called Printer Driver. Now, the reason I did that is most people's Downloads folders are full, and you don't want to uncompress that print driver in all those files. So best practice is to create a printer driver folder and then paste that compressed file, which looks like this, into the printer driver folder. So in other words, let's, let's take this back out. When you download it, it will be here. We're just going to move it into the printer driver folder. Once we're here, we're going to right click on it go to extract all and we're going to extract it and it does take a little bit of time okay so now we can go into this folder and we'll go into driver now what you'd want to do is if you was uh, going to copy this to a thumb drive to install on other computers, just you could grab this file here, this uh, package, and just copy it over, or this package here. You can start at the driver uh, folder, doesn't matter. But you want to basically copy all of this over to the thumb drive, 
That way you can stick it into the computer, open it up, go in here and run the setup 64 or the setup file. We're going to run setup 64. We're going to agree, click next, and now what it's going to do is go out and find the printer for us. And while we're waiting for that, you can see it pulled up the machine here. Uh, Konica Minolta print drivers come defaulted to two-sided. And if you have a color machine, they come defaulted to color. So if you want to change your defaults to black and white and single side, we need to set those. If we click the advanced setting, we'll go ahead and change this to single side. Now if you notice, this driver package senses that our machine has a fax kit on it. So it's wanting to install the fax driver as well. And if you want to do that, that's fine. What that basically means is you can send a document from your computer out as a fax through the copier by printing it to fax. We're not going to go into that right now, uh, but that's what that option's for. We're going to uncheck this, or leave this at one side, click Next, and then click Install. And as we finish up here, uh, the machine is going to go out, the, the actual driver is going to go out and pull the machine and find out all the features that it has. So if you had a finisher, you had a stapler, a three-hole punch, extra paper trays, all those sorts of things, the driver will pull that information in and set up the printer for you accordingly. So you don't have to manually go in and add those features. If you are setting up the driver, the, the second method we're going to discuss, you'll need to know in advance what features your machine has. Okay, so now we see the default printer is a Konica Minolta C368 series PCL. So the C308 happens to be part of the family of the C368. So C368, C258, C308, uh, uh, all those machines are all the same family. So you'll see it listed like this. Uh, here in this interface, if we go into uh, rename printer, we can call it whatever we want. I'm going to call this dispatch printer. Click OK. We can go into the properties, and if we want to see what uh, peripherals the machine does have. We click configure. It will show us this information here. If you click start under the software tools web connection, it actually launches the machine's web interface so you can add addresses to the address book uh, for the machine. So we might come back to that at another time when we go to add addresses. But um, this is the hardware part of the of the machine and in the settings if you were using account codes where you had to walk up to the copier and enter a code to access the machine you can set the authentication settings here uh, under the settings in the uh, dispatch printer properties for a pop-up so you can enter the code every time you print uh, but we're not going to look at that right now. That's going to be a little bit more advanced. We will talk about account codes if you want to embed them in the driver here in a second. But I just wanted to show you where that was in case uh, pop-ups is something you need for authentication uh, or account track. We're going to print settings. Here's where we're going to set our defaults if we missed the single side, uh, two side option. We can select that here. We're going to default to single side. We can drop down here to select color and select grayscale. If we go to our finishing, if we had a finisher, we wanted default stapling or anything like that, we could do that here. So we're going to click OK. 
And if we want to print a test print, we can do that here. And we click Finish. Now, if you have account codes, I'm going to go ahead and click Finish because we've already closed this out. If we have account codes and you need to add a code to be able to print, if we go back into the printers, and we go back into the Printing Preferences, under the Basic tab, you'll see Authentication Account Track. Now, because my machine's not set up to use authentication or account track, these are grayed out. If your machine was set up to require an uh, account code or user authentication, these would be open, and you could enter your password for account track, click Verify, it will let you know if it's okay. The same thing for user authentication, you would enter your credentials here, click Verify, click OK, hit OK, hit Apply, and they will lock that authentication information into the print driver so you don't have to enter it every single time you send a print. Okay, so that's it as far as installing the printer. If you had multiple machines on your network, when we were doing the search uh, when we first launched the application, it would find all those machines as well. You could actually install them all at the same time. What we're going to do now is install a printer uh, the old-fashioned way uh, where if you go and you launch this application and it doesn't work, it doesn't find the machine, uh, but you're, you know for sure that your computer is able to talk to the, the printer, whether you use a ping or something, uh, first of all, you probably want to talk to your IT person to see if you can figure out why, why uh, the installer isn't working. If it's because you have SNMP turned off or some other protocol that the machine requires, uh, then you'll have to do it this, this, this technique. So if you're installed and you're ready to go, you can stop here if you want to hang out and see what I'm doing here with the alternate technique, uh, feel free. In this case, we're going to install another machine and since I already have the driver package installed for this series machine, I'm going to select an older machine uh, that I have pre-downloaded the driver for. And uh, so I don't need have, have to go back through that, and we're just going to add the printer. So what we're going to do is we're going to click Add Printer. And the printer's not going to be listed here, so we're going to click the printer isn't listed. We're going to add printer using TCP IP address or host name. We'll click Next. We're going to select TCP IP device, and I'm going to enter the IP address for the printer we want to print to. This is not necessary. Um, we're not going to query because sometimes this will take a very long time if it goes out and tries to figure out which driver it needs. So it's best just to uncheck this click Next, then you're going to click Have Disk, and then you're going to browse out to the directory where your folder is that has the driver. In this case, I had downloaded it and put it in my Downloads folder. So we're going to go to Downloads, and in this case, I downloaded the driver into the C454 folder. I'm going to go in here and just start opening these folders until I get to the Drivers folder. I'm going to use the PCL, go into the English folder. I'm going to select X64 because I have a 64-bit computer. And I'm going to select this setup information file. I'll click OK. And it's going to give you a listing of the printers that it could possibly be. In this case, it's a C454, so that is in the C554 family. We're going to click Next, and I'm going to name this uh, printer what I want to call it. Click Next, and we're going to click Yes, and it'll begin installing the printer. 
Now, what you'll need to know in advance is if you have SNMP blocking, or if it is blocked and it's not able to communicate with the machine, it's not going to know what kind of finisher, what kind of paper trays, or anything that you have. So you might have to pull your order sheet when you order the copier and it has all the peripherals on it. You might have to pull that and look to see what you have and add that manually. Or uh, in, in this case, it's going to be able to go out and pull the peripherals because I don't have SNMP blocked. But I want to show you where that is. We're not going to share this printer. We're going to click Next. And I'm going to go ahead and click Finish for now. So here's our service printer. Now, this printer has a finisher on it, it has a stapler, it has a three-hole punch, and it has uh, the big trays at the bottom. So if I right-click this printer and I go to Printer Properties, and I go to the Configure tab up here, up here to top, uh, here you can see that it pulled the information. So you can see the finisher has a booklet finisher on it and uh, it's got the paper trace selected correctly. Now, had this just been the machine and it didn't have all these on here, what I would have to do is go down through this list and pick the options that I have and add those in the settings box. And just keep scrolling down and keep adding all those features. And when I'm all done, I click Apply, click OK, and that locks those features in. Okay. Also, if you're using account codes uh, and you're using this method, you'll have to tell the machine that you're using user authentication or if you're using account track. So you would select that and hit this drop down and select which method that you're using. Then click OK. So now our service printer is installed. So that's the second method. So uh, that should get you up and printing. If you have any questions, let us know. Uh, you can shoot us an email or leave a comment in the comment sections, and we'd be happy to get back to you. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time.